how did you get that first jump from writer's PA to writer's assistant or writer's assistant to in a writer's mm-hmm. room? I mean, cause it's sometimes you get lucky and other times you're working at it for 20 years. I think everybody, everybody has the same path. It's just different. It looks different from far away, but like, Basically, I think my advice to anybody that wants to do that is this is how it worked for me. Is I, when I first moved out here, I didn't know if I wanted to be a writer or if I wanted to be a director. I knew I didn't want to be an actor, but I, I knew what I wanted to do was make stuff. Like that was the headline. I wanted to make stuff. And I, I desperately wanted to be a writer, but I think like many writers, I think I'm a hack and an idiot and who would want to read my writing? Every writer um, thinks that. I hope so, because it's all true. We all <laughs> suck. The, um, I, I've worked with a couple actually great writers and it's always the worst because they're so good. And then you're like, fuck. <laughs> um, and then you just aspire and aspire. But what I did was, you know, when I was talking about how I worked all those lower decker gigs is I was always excited to be doing anything on shows to see how they actually got made. Cause every show is different. Yeah. So I was, I worked in as an intern in movies for a minute that just got a little bit on my resume that said, Hey, this guy has worked at all. And then I was a production assistant on Drawn Together, which was an animated show on Comedy Central right. and then on South Park. And then the South, while I was there, Matt and Trey were writing and making Book of Mormon. And then they got so into that that they stopped making movies. So the head of their, their producer who was in charge of making movies had less to do. And so she ended up getting hired to become the head of animation at Fox and knew me as a production assistant at South Park and took me to be her assistant there. So when I was an assistant, I think I was there for like three, maybe over three years, which is a really long time to be an assistant. But while I was there, every night went home and wrote. Every lunch read and wrote. Went to other departments there. Went to live action comedy. Guys, give me scripts to read. And not just scripts that they're making for air. Give me the scripts that you guys read that came in that made you go, we have to meet with the writer who wrote this. Like That's all I wanted. And from there, working there, two important things happened. Is I met Justin Roiland, who we developed with for a while, and we talked about video games a lot. (laughs) And I learned that the best scripts for me to write were scripts that were very readable, that were fun to be read, that you don't need something that can be made. You need something that is short, that is, it gets into the story quickly. I could talk about this forever. Whatever. I learned how to write to be it. read, and it was great. So I started writing to be read as opposed to be, you know, as opposed to what I thought was supposed to be written. And I, uh, I ended up, uh, a show got, as sometimes happens, a show got picked up uh, called Out There for uh, IFC. And I went there and I became a writer's assistant for that show. And then Rick and Morty that got the pilot picked up. And they, Adult Swim was picking up two scripts to be written to prove that Rick and Morty should be picked up to series. And they needed a writer's assistant. And so Justin emailed me and said, hey, watch this pilot. If you're into this, do you want to come and be our writer's assistant on this? It might only be a two-week gig. So I watched the Rick and Morty pilot, and I was just like blown away. Like That was my perfect pilot. And I, yeah. anytime somebody says that they don't like that pilot, I just want to shake them and be like, you don't know how hard pilots are. Like the Rick and Morty pilot so effortlessly is funny and sets up the tone and the dynamic of that show. I just lost my mind. Like I thought it was amazing. And so at the very beginning of Rick and Morty, it was Justin Roiland, Dan Harmon, Ryan Ridley, and me. And it was us sitting in a room every day, me taking notes and occasionally like fearfully pitching a joke. And (laughs) the four of us wrote, the Lawnmower Dog episode and the Rick Potion number nine episode, which is what mm-hmm. how the show got picked up and the full series. And then from there, I became writer's assistant on the full first season. And then I got to write an episode at the end of that season because I'd been, you know, working with the guys long enough that they kind of recognized that I was a big sci-fi geek and a comedy geek and that I could do it. Second season I got moved up. And then eventually by fourth season, uh, I was showrunner. Because mm-hmm. I just, you know, I really, I really got, you know. I liked Dan and Justin's vision for the show and I really liked writing the show. I really liked that stuff. And the only reason that I'm not still there, I think is because I sold solar opposites and star Trek at the exact same time. So then I concurrently at one point started staffing star Trek. I was show running Rick and Morty and concurrently show running solar. 
Solar shares basically a wall in the same office as Rick and Morty. And then I had to part ways with, with Rick and Morty to basically rewrite Star Trek when Solar Opposites is being animated. And then when Star Trek is being animated, I write a new season of Solar Opposites. And it just goes back and forth like that. And I've been doing that for a couple of years now. But I think that the... <clears throat> so that's the long-winded Mike McMahon's talking too much version of it. But I think that the, the headlines for people out there are that you need to be working to some extent on the stuff you want to work on. And if you can't work exactly on that stuff, you need to work on stuff that you like that's adjacent to it or is from people who worked on stuff you liked before. Mm -hmm. Because what that will do is, you know, the, the opportunities will come to you. You just have to make sure that you are prepared to grab them when they come. Because there was one moment I remember where somebody was like, hey, will you help us on this script? And I fucked it up. And they were like, yeah, no thanks. And I, I viscerally <laughs> was like, I can never fuck that up again. That doesn't happen too often. And the, you know, the going home and writing and the tons of reading, like the one note that I would ask for people and the one note that I'll give to people now is, this is the page I stopped reading on. This is the line I stopped reading on. And here's why. Because right. if somebody will stop, if somebody stops reading your script for any reason, then who fucking cares how great it is 10 pages later? Like they're just out, you know? And so I started just trying to write scripts that you got all the way through and that the worst note you could get was, I wouldn't mind if this was slightly longer, you know, like great note, I'll write three more pages. <laughs> um, and so, you know, having your writing ready, having, figuring out what your voice as a writer is, which sounds impossible, but translated, that just means what could you just sit down and write and never get sick of it? Like what kind of stories do you like to write? And then being brave enough to be like, even like, you know, there was a long time where people were like, stop writing shows that take place on spaceships, man. Like, what are you doing? Those are hard to make. And I can listen like, to them. Yeah. I was like, sorry, but they make me laugh. Like, that's what I like to do. And even to this day, my manager loves telling the story where the first note she gave me on my first sci-fi script, she was like, why does this have to take place in a spaceship? <laughs> and, and, you know, she slowly just understood that like, that's what gets me excited. So you know, I mean, it's corny, but like being true to what you like to do, learning from the people around you, working with people that are better than you, and then, you know, not giving up and opening yourself to opportunities that you believe in. Like nobody knew Rick and Morty was going to be awesome. Like I knew when I saw that pilot, you know, like that really spoke to me. And mm -hmm. I thought that I could help make it at least 1% better with my, with my, like my joy for it, you know? And if you approach everything like that, you know, turn down stuff that like, if you're going to get a writer's assistant gig, like you can get trapped in writer's assistant gigs too. Like if you don't have joy for what you're working in. Um, but lots of writing on your own, lots of write writing that is made to be read, not as made to be produced unless you're going to produce it on your own. And then Godspeed, I think that's awesome too. Um, and then just working with people that you really respect so that when the opportunities arise, those opportunities are coming from people that you, that make the kind of stuff that you want to make.